Welcome to Muddy Math. I'm Sam. I'm here to clear up the muddy moments in middle school math for you. Today we are looking at how we can describe the overlap of two populations using visual data displays as well as comparing populations using center and spread. Here you see a dot plot of two samples of two populations in the Pixar film Finding Nemo. We have the tank animals and the young animals. For each of these populations, tank animals, young animals, I randomly selected five characters to represent this population. So my sample size is five and I chose them randomly. In each population, there's not more than 10 characters that fit that description. So this is a decently sized sample for the population size. Now the population size is so small that it might be more realistic to include all of the characters that fit these descriptions into our samples. However, for the sake of this film, we're just gonna stick with five. Now, the more characters you have in your sample, the more reliable the data, but the idea here is less about sampling and populations and more about comparing overlap and using measures of center and spread. Here we see the heights of the characters displayed as a dot plot. The blue dots are the young characters, the red dots are the tank characters. And we want to look at the mean and the mean absolute deviation because both of these samples are symmetric in general. They're not skewed right or left. If they were skewed right, we would have one character that was really tall pulling the data to the right. And if we were skewed left, we would have a really teeny tiny, maybe microscopic character that would pull the mean to the left when we calculated it. And we don't have that here. So we are safe to use the mean and the mean absolute deviation. Otherwise, we would use the median and the quartiles and a box and whisker plot. So here, what I've done is I've calculated the mean and the mean absolute deviation for both samples. The young characters have a mean of 23 and 2 tenths and a mean absolute deviation of 7 and 4 hundredths. So I can take the center, which is the mean, and that's the center point, that is the middle of the data, and we are going to deviate away from it, grouping them by mean absolute deviation, how far away they deviate from the mean. So we use the center of the data as the starting point, and then we deviate from there, left and right, using one mean absolute deviation. So here you see, for the young characters, one mean absolute deviation below and above the mean. We have three characters that are typical because they fall within one mean absolute deviation of the mean. And those characters are Pearl, Tad, and Sheldon, okay? For the tank characters, our mean is 16 and 8 tenths, found by adding up all of the data points and dividing by five. And then the mean absolute deviation is seven and 84 hundredths. So calculating the distance each of those data points is from the center, adding them all up, make sure you take the absolute value and then divide by five. So here, our mean absolute deviation takes us to about 25 and about nine. In this case, we only have two characters that fall within one mean absolute deviation of the mean. So in this case, we only have bloat and bubbles that are considered typical size of the tank characters. Gil falls within two mean absolute deviations of the mean and Jock and Gurgle are on the other side, two mean absolute deviations from the mean. None of our characters fall outside two mean absolute deviations from the mean. And if they did, we might say, are they an outlier? And it might skew our data, unless we had one on each side. So that's sometimes tricky. That's why we use the spread to see how close together our data is and how far apart it is from the middle, from the center, okay? So these two populations are very similar, although the young characters are typically a little bit taller or longer than the tank characters. Why do you think that is, that the sea creatures are a little bit taller or longer than the tank creatures? Write your answer in the comments below. Thank you, please hit the subscribe button and ring that bell if you wanna be notified of more videos from Muddy Math. See you next time.